ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jerry Seinfeld and Stella McCartney. Thank you all so much for being here. Welcome to the uh, Lincoln Center Corporate Foundation event. That word covers everything, doesn't it? Uh, so we're here tonight uh, to discuss Stella, fashion, anything that uh, we feel comes up. I, I have some thoughts that I, that I would like to uh, start with. Anything you would like? Do you have an opening statement of any kind? I'd like to thank Chelsea, Chelsea for ruining my eye makeup. <laughs> and her dad went to prison. I'd like to remind her that my dad also had a little spell in the old... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, um, let's get to the, to the hard news here. Uh, my first question is, have you seen my new show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee? <laughs> And what do you like about it? I have, Jerry, I have. And what I particularly like about it is the fact that you're in a car mm -hmm. with comedians. That's right. And you're getting coffee. That's right, okay. That tequila really worked. I just had a um, okay, so I'm wearing this. Um, this is the only piece of uh, jewelry that I wear. It's a ID bracelet from the 60s. Can you see that? When I was a, a, a young boy in high school, all the guys, the cool guys, had these, yeah. and I always wanted one, and my wife uh, finally got me one. My dad had one of them. Really? Yeah. So I just want to know if you like it. I like it. Do you have your name on it? No. You need to put your name on it. Well, people know who I am, so I thought <laughs> I'd just leave it blank. Okay, <clears throat> now let's get to fashion, which is really a subject that interests me. <laughs> My first question about fashion is, what's the difference what anybody wears anyway? <laughs> oh, I know. What's the difference? I know. Okay, now am I supposed to You're supposed be to answer funny, it. No, I'll be okay. funny. The you answer the question. <laughs> it's a legitimate question. Okay, the difference is, is that I think that what you wear reflects who you are and how you feel. Okay. And so I think that makes it important. It also keeps you warm, mm -hmm. and it means you're not naked in public. Okay, so what you wear and how you feel. So if you feel really bad, what should you wear? <laughs> I think people tend to, if they feel really bad, they tend to want to sort of, the thing is, I want to be quite serious here because I think that's quite a serious question. Well, thank you. I mean, it's just a real interview. Um, <laughs> I think if, I think that if, I can only speak for women because I am a woman and I dress women, but mm -hmm. I think it's also the same for men. If you feel rubbish mm -hmm. about yourself or about the day, about the weather, then you tend to reflect that in what you're wearing. So normally you wear black. <laughs> So do you think you should dress better when you feel bad to make yourself feel good? You said it should reflect how you feel, so maybe you should dress bad when you feel bad. I think it's okay to dress bad when you feel bad. What, but I what, think is, what to you is dressing bad? What do you wear that's really bad? I don't ever. How dare you, You Jerry never Seinfeld. dress bad? I'm so deeply offended, actually, really? by that question. Okay. You know me. Have I ever dressed? Are you trying to say that I've dressed bad when well, I've been with you? Well, there must be. What are you saying, really? You don't have anything in your closet that is bad. Nothing. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Um, you ha you told me last night as we were talking about what kind of things we should talk about. You said that you want women to feel empowered by the clothes. What what is the power that you want them to have? What what power don't they have? I would like to know. What's missing, for Christ's sake? Because as far as I can see, women are crushing us with their power. 
I kind so, of see. Th I get it. I, I agree with what, that. What do you think? I'll, yeah. What power, as, as, a, as a woman, you, you're a great champion of women, what power do you think they should have more of? God help us. Yeah. I, you know what? I can't argue that. I think most women in this room, I would hope, are encouraging themselves to have confidence, mm -hmm. to feel that they are true to themselves. And mm -hmm. I think it's more an inner power, Jerry, that I was talking about. Inner power. Power over. That's what I've decided now, since I'm sitting in this right. chair with inner you. Power. That it, I was thinking and talking about inner power. OK, well, you can't get in trouble for inner power, I guess. <laughs> um, OK, this, my next question is a two-part question. And it's, why do most people look disgusting? <laughs> and why are they getting more and more disgusting with each passing year, as far as I can tell? <laughs> I, I perform in Vegas at Caesars Palace, at the Coliseum Casino. It's really nice. It's, it's like this. It's even nicer than this. People come to the show in shorts tank tops, flip-flops. What is going on? They're at one of your shows. This is the problem. <laughs> well, there you have it. I told you you could do this. That's, that's a, you want to know my theory on it? You know what I think is ruined fashion, honestly? Is these stupid Corona beer commercials, this beach nonsense of well, let's all be at the beach and the beach. So I'm going to dress like I'm at the beach even when I'm not. The shorts is an epidemic. Don't you feel that shorts is a cultural epidemic of disgustingness? You're not at a barbecue. There's no volleyball. We're just, there's no sand. Put some pants on. Thank you, fashion people. I do. Let's talk about menswear. You don't do menswear, correct? If I did, I would probably eliminate shorts from it completely. Thank you. <laughs> now, I am friendly with your lovely husband, Alistair. He's the coolest guy I've ever met. He's the most elegant man I've ever seen. How did you get this guy? I mean, this is the only kind whoa, of guy... Whoa, 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 stop, stop. Rewind and say that bit again. What? What's what that? I'm saying is... There no, are what very are you saying, Jerry There Seinfeld? are very few of these guys like your husband. I mean, there's like five of them. You're one of them. No, I'm not. I have never seen him look anything but spectacular, even in a T-shirt. He's just one of these spectacular people. Wait, the question and was, I how know, did I get how him? How did you find that guy? I mean, it seems That's like a rare... That's not what he said. That is actually not what he said, right? I, how did he you said, find him? He said, how did you get him? How did you get him? How do you get a guy like I that? I would like to say that he got me. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's the power part. <laughs> but he, he, it must be great for you to be with a man who's so nice to look at fashion-wise. Yeah. Fashion-wise, could nice you be, to with, be a man? with No, it's nice to be with someone who's just great to look at. Yeah. Full could stop. you be with a man whose fashion sense you did not like? Oh, I don't know. I, possibly it would be slightly more difficult. But that's a very nice answer. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you use <laughs> no leather or fur in your designs. You're a vegetarian. So glad you're doing this. I'm so relieved. Yeah, is Jerry it, Seinfeld's is doing this. It's All not, right, it's thanks. Good. Please, so I, I'm doing something here. <laughs> you use no leather. For, now, you're vegetarian. Now, I, I am not. I, in fact, eat only leather and fur. That is my diet. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's just a joke. All right. Um, no, we did talk about, uh, I thought this was interesting, the design wearability gap. Let's, let's just talk about a fashion show and what is presented to women for them to, this is what you need, right, the fashion shows. First of all, why are the models so angry? They, they seem very angry. <laughs> they seem like they storm down that runway, like when I get to the end of this runway, I am going to give this audience a piece of my mind. 
Then they stop and they glare at us and they just, oh, the hell with you, and they, and they walk back. What is their problem? Why are they, they so are, they're, pissed they're off, they're these super people? Because, you know, they, they're tired and they're undernourished. And, and, and the men, no, the men are even worse. Just these scowling, you never see a smile. In, in, at a fashion show or a fashion ad, they're just scowling at us constantly, these people. What, someone disagrees? Who? What, what, how do you feel, dear? Oh, in that's the show? Natalia. You know what? Natalia's a smiler. She's okay. a smiler. We've got a smiler in the room. You know what I do? At every one of my shows, I say to my girls beforehand, I say, look, we're in Paris. We're in the Opera Garnier. This is amazing. Be in this moment. Enjoy this moment. This is like incredible. Right. And they're all excited. They're all totally up for it. And I say, look, enjoy yourself. Take what's happening back here. Take it onto the runway. It's okay. You're allowed to smile. Enjoy it. And they go, and then they literally walk out and they go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, they're totally happy backstage. But Natalia's right, they don't all. They, they do, my girls smile. Why is My that? girls smile. Right, well, that's nice. <laughs> um, your, your show was the first fashion show I've ever seen in my life. Do you remember that? In, in Paris, I was there. I'd never seen one before. And... Uh, the press came up to me and they said, why are you here? And I, I told, I, my answer was, because I couldn't stay away any longer. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I like fashion shows. They're short. I like that they're, they're very tightly choreographed. There's loud music. The people walk out and, and uh, I, I do enjoy going to them. Um, How many other shows have you been to since I've then? been to a couple since then. How were they? Horrible. All horrible. <laughs> uh, what do you think of men that wear, wear extremely interesting socks? Like Christmas kind of socks. Yeah, like, like this really... Themed. Yeah, themed yeah. socks. Really carefully fluffy. chosen. Fluffy. Fluffy, designy. D I, don't, I don't care for it. Don't care all. for it. I don't care for a theme. What socks are you wearing? I'm just wearing you? black socks. Okay. I, I think men that have interesting socks aren't working hard enough. If they're, if they're to the knee and they're wearing shorts, then I have right. no problem with it. That you like. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your um, least favorite look for a man? Least favorite. Hold up the mic. <sighs> what do you see on the street that really disturbs you in menswear? See, I don't get disturbed. I think everything is, like, I'm not judgmental, Jerry. Oh, please. I'm, like, taking in That's everything. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you do not good. climb to the top of I'm this so business. PC. As you have done. But I don't do menswear yet. Oh, yet. Okay, there's a scoop. Um, I have heard you do not like the term fashion designer. Is that true? I don't not like the term. It's just when I was younger, I would go to, you know, I'd be, I was studying fashion and I would go to a sort of dinner or something and I'd sit next to somebody and they'd say, what do you do? And I never really wanted to say I'm a fashion designer. So I would always say I, I'm in design. Right. I just broaden it up a little bit. Like what do we think about that gigantic building on Park Avenue? Do we like that? <laughs> Is it cool to like it? Or should we not like it? What do we think? Do you know the building I'm talking about? You don't know the... Which it's building are we talking about on Park Avenue? It's, what is it, 432? It's 89? It's, it's the tallest building? Can I reserve building? the sort of English, English card? Can I call, can I call Everybody upon my Everybody else knows what I'm talking London. about, right? It's the biggest residential building ever built in Manhattan. It sticks up. Well, I'm assuming we don't care for it then, if that's the well, case. Well, I was trying to find out what I'm supposed I'm to say about it. I'm having an assumption that it's... It's not that bad. It's weird. Is the designer Everyone, of the building in the room? Everyone, hands up who likes the building. Hands up who likes this no. building. Let's do a... Nobody likes that building. Not one person in here likes the building. I kind of like it. <laughs> um, I don't even know the building. I, when I am in Paris, a couple of times that I have been there, I am very struck and impressed by the um, clothing of older women in Paris. I feel like they're very... 
they, they wear their age more gracefully than they do in other cities. New York, I would say, uh, pretty good. LA, the worst. <laughs> uh, older women there never seem to know how to look. All they, they keep just trying to backdate themselves to 26. <laughs> Why do women in Paris know how to do this so well? Because they're Parisian and they have, <laughs> what am I supposed to say to that? Um, they I mean, is that are, true? Do you find that to be the case? That I think, you know what, I'm half New Yorker and I am very taken by a, by a New Yorker chic woman. They actually come into my collections quite a lot as inspiration. Mm -hmm. But I think that you can't generalize, Jerry, and there's plenty of stylish older women out there and they're everywhere. Really? If you care to look for them. All right. More power for women. We're getting somewhere now. Um, so you've spent a lot of time in New York and London and Paris. If, if you were to be imprisoned in one of these cities, <laughs> that you could not leave ever that city for the rest of your life, which one would you pick? London. London. Tell us, tell us why. Well, I live in London, and my husband and my kids are in London, so I'd prefer to be imprisoned in a place where my family are close. <laughs> and they could bring me food occasionally and maybe come and see me every now and again. That makes total sense. Because, you know, do you it's a long way in New York. Right. New York would be second, of course. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Um, now, in my business, um, people lie a lot. <laughs> they tell you they like you. They're, they're ex they say, we're very excited about what you're doing, which uh, really just means they're very nervous. <laughs> I have a feeling in the music business, people lie even more than they do in my business. And I have a feeling in your business, they lie the most. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Yes. How, how do you handle this? I don't believe a word that anyone says to me. Really? That, that is a great strategy. Remember, I was kind of brought up in all the other industries also that you mentioned. Right. So, you know, either way, I was never going to believe anything anyone ever said to me. Right. Apart from everyone on the screen tonight, I believe every single word that they <laughs> said. <laughs> so what time of day do you begin? Can I just quickly say Doris Day? What? Doris Day was on there. Did you miss? It's like no, me missing the building. No, I was Doris working Day. on my interview. I, d I didn't. Oh, Doris Day was? Doris Day. Oh, that's fantastic. Not a big deal. Um, I was going to ask you about your day, for you to tell us a little bit about your day and how you approach, you know, what's your work day like? What time do you wake up? I wake up early and I um, take my kids to school in the morning and then I go to work. And then it can be a mixture of anything. I can go into work and I can design clothes or handbags or shoes or stores, or I can work on the music soundtrack for my show, or I can work on an ad campaign, or I can just, you know, it's a whole variety of things. And then I can interject into that a sports day if I have two minutes or, you know, so it's kind of, it's basically, the, the main day is a kid's school drop-off, work, then kid's bed. Right. That, that's pretty impressive. I, I've heard that, that, that people in your business pull tremendous hours when, these, when they're trying to get their shows together. Does it get crazy right before the shows? Yeah, it does. I mean, it does. It's, it's pretty hardcore. But we are... It's funny. I've never really understood that side of the fashion industry. There is a side that's kind of like, if you're not working until 4 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. You're an, a terrible person, and you can't—you know—you don't have a good work sort of ethic. So um, I'm more of the belief that if you're happy, a lot of the, a lot of the people that I work with have families also, mm -hmm. and um, I don't really believe in sort of not allowing people to see their families mm -hmm. because of work. So I think I get the best out of people, you know, when they have quality time. But having said that, there are times where people work really, really hard, and they never sleep and you know 
It's horrible. Well, the, the quality of everything you do shows in that, that, that tremendous work ethic that you do have and the talent that you have. And we all appreciate you so much giving us this time here today and telling us a little bit more about what you do. Now, and usually in these events, uh, they, they're always, we're going to, they give out an award. And uh, we're going to do that today. And we have a very special guest who is going to present the award. I don't know who it is. They told me they, they, they found someone who uh, was free and that uh, he would be available to give the award. Is that person here? Oh, there he is. There's that young man. Young man, come on up here. Oh my God, it's Sir Paul McCartney. as well to yeah. accompany your thank yeah. you dad thank you thank you thank you Stel. we used to be friends with the seinfelds <laughs> but after tonight i'm not so sure <laughs> you grilled my daughter yes well it, we were trying to uh, have a little fun. Yeah, That's why yeah. you hire a uh, comedian, you don't... Yeah, but Jerry, it <laughs> wasn't all fun. No, nothing ever is. Oh, shit. <laughs> Honestly. And, you know, anyway, back to Stella. Um, yeah, Stella, oh. She was just my tiny little baby once, and she's a beautiful, growed woman, so talented and so wonderful. And, um, oh boy, what can I say? I just love her. Aww. I love you. God, this is so weird. This is the weirdest thing ever. Um, I, look, thank you so much, everyone. I, um, this is weird, right? Everyone is like laughing their heads off. This is so weird. Um, I would like to just thank everyone so much for coming tonight, all my family, all my friends. I'd like to thank Stefan for working on this so hard. He worked with me. I really would. Um, I'd like to thank everyone in my team because... Uh, there's no way I'd be here I'm really accepting this honor without them. Um, Glenda, Bailey, and everyone at Harper's Bazaar, thank you so much. And everyone at the Lincoln Center, thank you so much for having me and my weird and wonderful gang of people. <laughs> thank you.